In this video, we're going to be looking at the symmetry properties of sine and cosine. For more resources on year one trigonometry, visit parkermaths.com forward slash y1 trig. Let's start off with the graph of y equals sine x between negative 360 and 360. What I'd like you to do is pause the video for a minute and think, could you draw a line of symmetry on this graph? Welcome back. There's a few places you could put your line of symmetry. I'm going to put mine here at x equals 90 degrees. And this allows us to make links between different values of sine x on the graph. Let's first of all just reduce the domain of our graph to 0 and 360 though. And I'm going to start with an angle of 30 degrees. Now we know that sine 30 is a half, but we could find another value of sine that is also a half by projecting over to the opposite side of the line of symmetry. And to get that value, think about the distance between 0 and 30. And then if we take that distance and move it across to the other side, we can see the distance between 180 and our second value is also 30. And that means if we track back from 180, we get 150. And so that tells us that sine 30 equals sine 150. You could perhaps realize that from sketching sine 30 and sine 150 on the unit circle as well. But let's think more generally about this. Instead of having 30 and 150, let's imagine our first value was theta. And then think, how would we get our second value? Well, the distance between zero and our value theta is the same as the distance between 180 and our other value if we're tracking backwards. And so on the right hand side, we have 180 minus theta. And so we can have a more general rule that says sine theta is equal to sine of 180 minus theta. And that works for any value of theta that we can think of. We call it the symmetry property of sine. And it's something we'll use really frequently throughout the course. So it's an important one to memorize. Now, just here, we've only shown it for a value between 0 and 90. Let's just make sure it works for some other values as well. So we'll go back to our graph between minus 360 and 360. We could pick another value on our graph. Let's say 225 degrees. And if we do 180 minus 225, we get negative 45. And we can still see that the symmetry is holding about the line x equals 90. We'll draw it on there. And so it doesn't have to just be values between 0 and 90 we choose. It can be any value that we like. OK, let's now look at the symmetry properties of cosine then. So here's the graph of cosine x between 0 and 360 degrees. We can see that there's a line of symmetry this time at x equals 180. And so if we move either side of 180, we can see we get two cosine values that must be the same. So for example, if we had cos of 60, which is a half, we must have one on the other side as well. And we can get that in a similar way that we did with sine. We can say the distance between zero and 60 is the same as the distance between 360 and our second value if we track backwards. And so if we track backwards 60 from 360, we get to 300. And so we can say cos 60 equals cos 300. Once again, though, you could get that from the unit circle if you drew a diagram of cos 60 and cos 300. More generally, though, if we have a value of theta, to get the other value of theta, which is symmetrical with that, we would start from 360 and we would subtract theta. And so one of the symmetry properties for cosine is cos theta equals cos of 360 minus theta. And once again, this is an important identity to memorize as it's something that's gonna come up a lot throughout the course. There is a second symmetry property for cosine there, which we can see quite easily if we draw the graph between minus 360 and 360. We can see that the y-axis is a line of symmetry. So if we go the same distance either side of the y-axis, we can get two more values for which cos theta is the same. So for example, if we have 60 on the right hand side, we would get minus 60 on the left hand side. And we could say that cos 60 equals cos of minus 60. More generally, if we took a value of theta on the right, we would get minus theta on the left. And so we can say cos theta equals cos minus theta. So this is another useful symmetry property as well. It's absolutely essential that you know at least one of them. 
but it's more helpful if you know both. So just as a summary, we have one symmetry property we need to remember for sine and two for cosine. And the best piece of advice that I could give with these is know them like you know your times tables. If you can recall them without thinking about it, it will make a lot of the trigonometry that we do seem a lot easier.